Hello everyone. This is the story of a young man named Chris, who is both wealthy and successful. He is married to a beautiful woman named Cynthia and has a younger brother named Ikenna. One fateful day, Chris returned from a trip, planning to surprise his wife with breakfast in bed on her birthday. However, to his shock, he found his brother Ikenna in bed with Cynthia. Both were stunned upon seeing Chris and immediately began pleading for forgiveness. Heartbroken, Chris walked away in disbelief. Still in bed and panicking, Cynthia su suggested to Ikenna that they could run away together. Ikenna, however, said he didn't have the money for such a plan. Cynthia then revealed she had 5 million naira, which she believed would be enough for them to escape. Ikenna was surprised by this. As Chris sat on the stairs, he began reflecting on the time when Chris had first asked him to look after Cynthia while he was away on a business trip. Ikenna had declined, explaining that he too was traveling for a business deal, which they had agreed upon. Chris, still sitting on the stairs, recalled the happy times he had shared with both Cynthia and Ikenna. Later that day, Ikenna and Cynthia, filled with regret, tried to leave the house but were terrified to find the door locked. Chris appeared and asked them to sit down for a conversation. He calmly began, I have some questions, and I need you to be completely honest with me. Are you ready for that? They agreed. Chris, in a sad tone, asked, How and when did all of this start under my roof? Cynthia was the first to respond, claiming that Ikenna had come to her room while she was wearing a towel and had taken advantage of her. She said he threatened her, warning that if she told anyone, he would harm Chris. Fearing for her husband's life, she had kept silent. Ikenna, shocked by her account, called her a liar. He confessed that he had stolen money from Chris's room and that Cynthia had caught him on camera. She had then blackmailed him into having a relationship with her, threatening to expose the theft if he didn't comply. Chris, unsatisfied with their stories, pulled out a weapon and demanded the truth. Frightened, Cynthia and Akenna finally admitted that they had been involved in an affair for six months. Cynthia had been attracted to Akenna for a long time, and their relationship was consensual from the beginning. Chris was devastated, realizing that both his wife and brother had betrayed him. Though overwhelmed with emotions, Chris couldn't bring himself to harm them. Instead, he left them confused and terrified by his calmness. As they began arguing in panic, Chris went to his room, poured himself a drink, and reflected on the love he once shared with Cynthia. How they ate together, played games, and enjoyed life as a family. Chris later called his mother, asking her to come home. When she arrived, Chris broke down in tears as she comforted him. They all gathered in the living room, where their mother furiously reprimanded both Cynthia and Ikenna for their betrayal. After her scolding, Chris interrupted, saying, Mom, I wanted you here before I made this announcement. I have made my decision. I am cutting ties with both of them. Ikenna, you are no longer my brother, and Cynthia, you are no longer my wife. I've already contacted my lawyer, and the divorce papers will be ready in two days. I want you both to pack your things and leave my house before I come back downstairs. Cynthia and Ikenna immediately fell to their knees, begging for forgiveness, but Chris walked away, leaving them pleading behind him. A few minutes later, Chris's mother entered his room and sat with him. She began pleading with him to forgive Cynthia and Ikenna and move on with his life. Mom, cheating is something I can never tolerate in my life, so I'm sorry, but I can't forgive them, Chris said firmly. His mother asked, what about your brother? He is your blood. Won't you forgive him and move on too? Chris responded, Mom, Ikenna didn't think about me when he was with my wife, so he doesn't deserve my forgiveness either. My mind is made up. Uh, his mother then pleaded with him to at least let them stay until the next day so they could figure out where to go. He agreed, and she embraced him. Meanwhile, in Ikenna's room, he started packing his clothes as Cynthia sat on the bed, looking confused. Ikenna, hopeful about the five million naira Cynthia promised, suggested they should run away together and start a new life. We have everything we need to start fresh, he said, leaving Cynthia even more puzzled. Knowing she didn't actually have the money, Cynthia decided to play along, pretending to agree with him. They continued fooling themselves, unaware of how irrational their actions were. Isn't that foolish? How could two grown adults be this misguided? But the story isn't over yet. Later that evening, Chris was trying to sleep when his mother brought him some food and called him to eat. At first, he said he wasn't hungry, but she insisted, even feeding him herself. She became emotional and started crying. When Chris asked why she was crying, she replied, I just feel for you, that's all, leaving him confused as he continued eating. Hours later, Chris began experiencing severe convulsions in his room, foaming at the mouth and rolling on the floor. 
His mother, Ikenna, and Cynthia rushed to his room and immediately took him to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctor came out and delivered the tragic news. Chris didn't survive and had been dead upon arrival. His mother fainted, overcome with shock. Cynthia wailed in grief, while Ikenna appeared equally devastated. Back at the house, Ikenna went to Chris's room to collect some valuables in order to flee. He found several bundles of US dollars, smiled, and quickly hid them in his back pocket as he quietly tried to leave the room, hoping not to get caught. Meanwhile, Cynthia had packed her belongings and was preparing to leave when the police arrived. They ordered her back inside for questioning. As they began searching her bag, Cynthia hesitated, but eventually complied. Inside, they found property documents belonging to Chris that she had stolen. Ikenna, shocked, confronted her for taking the documents before him. Cynthia, in turn, confronted Ikenna for taking Chris's money first. The scene was chaotic. How could someone's wife and brother be so callous after his death? Their argument escalated, and Cynthia finally admitted there was never five million naira in her account. She had lied to keep Ikenna by her side, knowing she was losing control of the situation. Ikenna, furious, tried to attack her, but the police intervened. Surprisingly, Ikenna was Chris's next of kin, though he didn't know it. His greed and selfishness had blinded him, at making him look even more suspicious as he tried to run away with a few dollars. Minutes later, the police asked who had served Chris his last meal. The doctor confirmed that Chris had been poisoned. Just then, their mother entered and slapped Ikenna for abandoning her at the hospital while he tried to steal his brother's money. The police repeated the question about who served the food, and Chris's mother admitted that she had served him. However, she accused Cynthia of poisoning Chris. She recalled how Cynthia had been lingering around the kitchen when she was preparing the meal and had caught her with the plate meant for Chris. Cynthia, horrified by the accusation, tried to defend herself, claiming she didn't poison her husband and would never have tried to harm him. Just then, Chris walked in, alive and well, shocking everyone who thought he was dead. They feared he was a ghost, but he assured them, I am alive, flesh and blood. He walked straight to his mother and said, Mom, I have something I need to ask you, and I really hope you'll be honest with me. His mother, confused, replied, Go ahead, I have never lied to you. Mom, why did you do it? I want to know why, Chris asked. His mother, still confused, they acted as though she didn't know what he was talking about, even checking his head and body as if to see if he was still okay. Mom, stop. I am fine. I saw you with my own eyes when you brought out that substance from the side of your breast and sprinkled it on the food you served me. He continued, I went back upstairs and pretended to be asleep. You came into my room, spoke so kindly and encouraged me like a mother should, telling me not to drown in my problems but to rise above them. I listened as you spoke so lovingly, but I knew you had an ulterior motive. When you started feeding me, I was crying because I had just witnessed my own mother poison my food and feed it to me. I hoped you'd change your mind, but you didn't. I continued eating, even though I knew what you'd done. Chris explained how he had gone to the bathroom afterward and vomited the food, saving himself from further harm. He said, I called my doctor immediately, and he advised me to come to the hospital for treatment. I rushed there without you knowing. Um, the doctor ran some tests and was relieved to find it wasn't too serious since I acted quickly. He gave me an antidote and I returned home. I bought Andrew liver salt and pretended to have convulsions. I, I took the powder and staged the scene where I called out your, your name and you all rushed in thinking I was fighting for my life. Well, you took me to the hospital, just as I had planned with the doctor. I asked him to tell you I was dead so I could find out why you did what you did. Chris then asked, If I had died, what would have been your gain, Mom? When you heard I was dead, you faked your fainting. I even told the doctor to watch you and confirm that you were pretending. He was shocked that you, of all people, would do this to your own son. His mother, realizing she had been caught, admitted her crime. She confessed, I didn't have any other option. I, I pleaded with you to forgive your brother and take him back, but you were too stubborn. You were bent on throwing him out of the house, and I couldn't bear to see that. The wealth and everything you have, I helped you achieve it. I gave you this life, and now you want to keep everything for yourself? I found out Ikenna was your next of kin, and I didn't want him to lose everything when you were about to kick him out. I love him too much to let that happen, so I decided to kill you so he would, he would inherit everything. Chris and everyone else were left in shock. Why would a mother choose to kill one child to save another? But then she revealed the real truth. Chris, you're not my biological son. You were adopted by my husband and we raised you as our own. Ikenna was stunned, unable to believe what he was hearing. 
Chris's mother, still unapologetic, told him she wouldn't stand by and watch him take everything from McKenna. She said they were supposed to share everything. Including my wife? Chris asked. His mother coldly replied that Cynthia willingly chose to be with McKenna, so no one was to blame. This left Chris speechless, disappointed, and devastated. My god, this is unbelievable, Chris thought. Just because he wasn't her biological child, did that give her the right to try and end his life for the sake of inheritance? This was cruel and unimaginable. A loving mother, biological or not, would never do such a thing. Chris condemned his foster mother's actions, feeling deeply betrayed. Helpless and lost for words, Chris asked the police to take action. His mother was arrested for attempted harm, while Ikenna and Cynthia were taken in for theft. Despite their pleas, especially from his mother, Chris stayed firm. He saw no remorse in her eyes and allowed the police to escort them out. Before Cynthia was taken away, Chris stopped the police to ask her one last question. He pulled her aside and asked, Cynthia, I need an honest answer. You kept rejecting my advances, so why did you allow my brother to be with you? Cynthia replied, Are you sure you want the truth? Can you handle it? Chris nodded, urging her to continue. She bluntly told him that he lacked passion and energy, and she had grown tired of the lack of excitement in their relationship. She admitted she didn't feel any desire when he touched her. As for Akenna, she said, He may not be perfect, but in that aspect, he's much better, leaving Chris even more heartbroken. Chris asked why she never told him so he could improve, but Cynthia said no woman would openly tell a man such things. If you wait for that, you'll be waiting a lifetime, she said. This harsh truth shattered Chris. He felt betrayed and devastated as he walked back inside. Indeed, relationships are built on more than physical attraction. When people don't understand this, they may seek temporary fulfillment elsewhere, thinking that will solve the deeper issues. This is my personal view, but feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. What did you learn from this story? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more interesting Nigerian movie updates. See you next time.